In this video, we'll take a look at an FPGA build of the PDP-1170. The hardware for this build is an Altera, or Intel, Cyclone 5 FPGA by QM Tech. The card comes with 32 megabytes of SDRAM, and it's built on a carrier card that Landboards has built called the Retro ep 4 c 15 the baseboard built by Landboards has a video connector for VGA connection with two bits of red, two bits of green, two bits of blue, a USB-B full-size connector, and it has a PS2 keyboard connector. The FPGA development environment is Quartus 2 version 12.1 and it's freely available from Altera Intel. There's a wiki page for the board and we'll quickly step through the wiki page, but the build is a PDP-1170. And let's take a look at the wiki page. The wiki page describes all the details of building in the PDP-1170 and the PDP-1145. And you can see the features here of the QM Tech card that's the card that sits on top of the Landboards card. It's got a 50 pin IO connector, PS2 keyboard connection, USB serial to parallel connection that powers the card a VGA connector with two bits of red, green, and blue each, and an SD card. The retro card is described on this page linked here, and here's a take a look at the QM Tech card itself, our little uh, wiki page for it. Uh, Cyclone 5 card with a 5 CE part on it. There's a 32 megabytes of SDRAM organized as 16 bits wide, and 50 megahertz uh, speed of the clock that runs on the card. Uh, details of the SDRAM part number are there as well. The PDP-11 build uses that SD, SDRAM. Here's the Altera Cyclone part number. The 5CEA2 part has about 10,000 ALMs inside of it, which is about 25,000 logic elements. And it has 1.76 megabits of, me of memory on it as well. The drive type is selected by this jumper in the bottom corner here. The three right set of pins select what type of drive it is. It's described here in the table on the wiki. RL, RK, and RP type drives are selected and either install a chunt into the right, middle, or next to the third pin over to select the different type of drive. We're also using another Landboards card. It's a LED switches card. It has eight LEDs, eight slide switches, and eight push buttons on it. And those connect up to the I.O. connector on the card, on the base card, which connects up to the FPGA pins shown here. The ones on the left and the far right are the ones that correspond to the 5 CEF part. And here's a table that shows what things connect up. There's a light for fetch at the bottom here. And there's four lights that describe the status of the SD card axis as read, write, and SD or SDHC, and then initialization light. The base card also has a USB serial port that powers the card and connects up to the FPGA so that it can be connected to from a modern computer and powered from a modern computer. The design is based on Sitzi von Sluten's original PDP 2011 design. Uh, apologies if I butchered your name if you're watching the video. Uh, you've got a very, it's got a very nice web page describing the build and the changes that he made. This is the most recent build as of the time of this video, late 2020 or early 2021 build. You've got some good descriptions here of the operating systems and things as well. That's the real beauty is you can put an old style operating system like 2.11 BSD on here and run it off the SD card. Um, there are some issues with licensing you probably need to understand if you go down this path. Uh, one way to tell image size, the image type, which type of drive it is, is off size often. Um, sometimes it's a little bit hard to figure out if you find one out in the wild. He has a Unix V6 build that works with a PDP 1145, or excuse me, PD, uh, Unix V5 that works with a PDP 1145. 
PDP V6 also works on the 1145, but you have to do some efforts to put the four images together into one image on the SD card. Uh, he has a little utility for doing that. Unix 7 runs on 1145 or an 1170, and if it's on 1170, you can't have more than two megabytes of memory. 211 is what we'll demonstrate in this video. It's BSD and it's running on an 1170. It's a pretty good build for the RP06 type of drive, so the jumper's in the third position from the right. You can also run RT11 with RT RK05 images, but it would need to be on an 1145. RSX 11M can run on the 1170. I've run most of these images that I'm highlighting here without any issues. Um, they're pretty ancient operating systems, but I focused on the 211 BSD image, and it runs, as I said, on the 1170. And he's got a download page that you can download the image directly from. It's a pretty big file. I think when you unzip it or untar it, it comes out to uh, about 170 megabytes on the SD card. But that's where the download image is, and it runs sort of stockish 2.11 BSD. Here's 2.11 booting. It comes up fairly quickly. You just hit enter, and it'll put in the boot string. Comes up, sorry about the quality of the screen here. My camera battery died, and I was going off a webcam. It's a little bit flaky, but hopefully you can get the idea. See four megabytes of memory there on the screen. If you hit Control D, it'll boot into the, oh, there was an LS. If you hit Control D, it'll boot into the shell for the root and password. There's no password, but the user ID is root. So I just hit Control D. Uh, sometimes it takes an extra enter there to get it to come up. Uh, hit root, and it comes up, and there it is. It's running 2.11 BSD from way back more than 20 years ago, I think. Print working directory, take a look at the directory of that root directory, the root folder, and, and just classic Unix style. Uh, if you do it without the AL, it prints out a shorter version, but without all the permissions and dates and times in it. Uh, you can switch over to the user folder and take a look at what's in there. Take a look, there's quite a bit of uh, different pieces of things. There's a C compiler on here. Quite a few other things, some games I believe are on here. Switch over to the source folder, take a look at what's in there, and uh, see the different libraries and bins and things, of etc. There's the games folder. Yeah, print the working directory, we're in user source, but we probably should switch back to home out of here. If you do the DF, it'll show how much disk space is available. There's quite a bit on the SD card. It's a pretty good sized file system. The message shows the dump of the boot up message that came up and the things that were attached. Again, showing the four megabytes of memory on the system. Well, let's switch over to the home directory. Let's see what's in there when we start out. Oops, there's a typo. CD home. Again, apologize for the video quality here. And there's a test folder there. If we switch over CD over to the test folder, there should be a Hello World program inside of there, and there is, and it's already been compiled, or it's uh, uh, compiled with the C compiler. And if we should be able to take a look at the listing for that with cat hello world.c. And it's the classic hello world and then a return back or an exit out. If we do dot slash a dot out, it'll run that program that was already built, and it prints Hello World to the screen, just pretty much what you would expect. They can uh, do a who to find out who you are while you root. Um, and I hit exit, I'm not sure if that gets me out of the shell or not. If I type who, it shows me still at the root, so I don't think it did what I thought it was gonna do. I'm sure there's people who know stuff more than I do, but when you're done, you have to make sure that you hit Halt to shut the system down. It'll do a clean sync of the drives, and you have to give it a few seconds for it to finally come back and say halting. If you want, if you want more information, you can see our wiki pages for these products, and we have YouTube videos on them as well. 
We have a store in Tindy where we sell all of our cards. Thanks for watching our video, and if you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.